Bodybuilders have always been searching for supplements and substances that can increase testosterone. Uh, a lot of people don't want to use anabolic steroids and other anabolic drugs, so they seek supposedly more natural alternatives. Among the most popular of these testosterone substitutes have been a class of chemicals known as ectosteroids. I've talked about ectosteroids in past videos. Ectosteroids are basically insect hormones. Uh, they, they're used in a process uh, of, of insect physiology called molting. Uh, but the uh, years ago, mostly Soviet scientists discovered that ectosteroids have a structure that's very similar to steroids. Steroids, of course, testosterone is a steroid, anabolic steroids. Steroids simply means that it's derived from the cholesterol molecule. So what they did is the Russians uh, did early experiments in the 60s and 70s with ectis, uh, various ectosteroids. Uh, a, cu a couple of them, they actually compared them to uh, very famous anabolic steroid drugs. Among them, the one, one of the most commonly compared steroid drugs that was used in the studies of ectosteroids was, uh, was a actually a uh, tread named Dianabol. And in these early studies, uh, they actually, the Russians tried to claim that some of the ectosteroids uh, were as potent anabolically as, an, as um, a, 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 you know, as Dianabol. Now, one problem with that, there's two problems that arise right off the bat. The first thing is that ectosteroids, unlike anabolic steroids, unlike testosterone, ectosteroids, and by the way, they're also found uh, in plants when they're known as, pla uh, um, uh, what do they call them, uh, phytoectosteroids is the, uh, uh, it's found in substances and foods like spinach and various plants. In fact, today I'm going to talk about, uh, but let me just finish my thought pattern here. But anyway, the point being that um, the, um, the, the ectosteroids do not interact with androgen receptors. Testosterone and anabolic steroids stimulate anabolic effects by interacting with androgen receptors in muscle. And um, these ectosteroids do not interact. So then they came out with an alternative hypothesis, which was actually shown in some isolated cell studies that the ectosteroids were capable of increasing uh, protein synthesis. Now, muscle protein synthesis is the, one of the underlying uh, factors of muscular hypertrophy or growth. In other words, if you could stimulate, um, uh, increase muscle protein stim uh, synthesis, usually you wind up with increased muscle growth steroids, anabolic steroids, growth hormone, um, and uh, testosterone itself, all of them increase muscle protein stimulus, um, I'm sorry, muscle protein synthesis by activating a pivotal substance called the mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR, as well as downstream anabolic signaling factors, which are way too complex <laughs> to get into here. In fact, they're only of interest to uh, biochemists. You really don't need to know this stuff, although a lot of people try to impress you with their knowledge by mentioning stuff like AKT and some of the others and phosphorylated this and that. You know, I mean, it's it's um, it's nice to know as a uh, from a biochemistry standpoint, but the practical knowledge of that is really useless. What you want to know is whether it, uh, the substance increases muscle protein synthesis. Now, the one I want to talk to, to uh, s uh, focus on today. Was, uh, was suggested to me uh, by a, uh, a, 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 in a comment section of one of my past videos. Uh, this is a particular um, uh, ectosteroid uh, source. It's called marrow root, M-A-R-A-L, marrow root. Another name for it is Luzia. Uh, the Russians call it Luzia. Now, the reason it's called marrow root was because uh, it was uh, found that uh, originally the known or it was discovered that a certain type of deer uh, called the marrow deer, who I guess it's found in Russia, Siberia, who knows, they like to munch on marrow, uh, marrow root. So they, on, uh, on this particular stuff, so they called it marrow root. They named it after the deer. It also has a rather complex, uh, bi uh, bi let's say, biological name, Rapanticum cathermoides. And needless to say, I'm not going to keep using that name. I'm going to just call it marrow root. It has been used in traditional Siberian and Russian medicine to bolster physical performance, especially after an illness. 
It's supposed to have the uh, enhanced physical performance and, and, and uh, enhanced male, male sexual performance. Uh, again, the active ingredient for marrow root is ectosteroids. Uh, now, the um, some of the research, I should say most of the research, that shows efficacy of marrow root has an anabolic, meaning that where it can increase, let's say, muscle power and muscle size. It comes from Russian studies, and Russian studies are notorious for having poor quality control. Very often, some of the early Ru Russian ergogenic research, when Western scientists, uh, Western scientists have tried to replicate it, they've come up empty. And this, is, this also, by the way, occurred with ectosteroids. Years ago, ectosteroids, because of this Russian research, a couple of companies started selling ectosteroid supp supplements and uh, claiming that they worked as well as anabolic steroids. Of course, they became very popular. This led to, search, uh, to some research by um, uh, Western scientists where they gave young men involved in resistance exercise. They gave them an ectosteroid su uh, supplement. Unfortunately, the they also gave them a couple other things. So, you know, this is a questionable study, but they found that uh, the, 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 the ectosteroid supplement, which they gave them, uh, seemed to have zero effect. Uh, uh, over a placebo and increasing muscular size, strength, or any other uh, uh, any other measure of uh, physical performance. Uh, now, the the one of the main uh, ectosteroids uh, shown in the Russian research was called 20-hydroxy ectosome. It's also known as ectosterone. Now, the problem with ectosterone is it has only an eight, eight minute half life. That means half the initial dose is broken down in eight minutes. That means there's very small amounts reach skeletal muscle. Now, the studies where they showed, uh, let's say, significant anabolic effects from giving this marrow root, marrow root uh, often involved injecting it directly into rat muscle. They gave it directly into the muscle through injections in rats, and it bypassed the oral rapid breakdown of the uh, ectosteroids, particularly 20-hydroxy ectosome. So again, if you give it, um, you know, through an injection, which is never done, you know, it's sold as pills, uh, you know, it, it may or may not have a uh, anabolic effect, but I can tell you right now, any anabolic effect will not, not be comparable to even the weakest anabolic steroids, contrary to what you might hear. Now let's a little talk about uh, a little a little bit more about marrow root specifically. Uh, as I said, it uh, uh, Chinese medicine they've used it to uh, as an herb for decreasing body fat and reducing atherosclerosis, which is the main cause of cardiovascular disease. Uh, uh, like, like say the uh, marrow deer, they they they're invigorated when they eat this, and that's how the whole thing started. Uh, uh, you know, and again, the Russians picked up on it. Now, the uh, the plant itself, marrow root, is uh, uh, mainly uh, the main active ingredient is 20-hydroxy ectosome. As I said, that has questionable utility in humans, but there is a pretty good amount of it found in marrow root. It can uh, be as much as 2.2 percent of the actual herb. So uh, it has a couple of other things in there, including tercosterone. Tercosterone, which is a, another popular anabolic, um, so-called anabolic supplement, which is pushed by many people. I've seen a lot of videos, a lot of well-known people on YouTube have called it high, the most anabolic ectosteroid of all, which, you know, when you consider that there was an analysis done of commercial tercosterone ster uh, supplements, and they were found to contain less than 1% tercosterone. In other words, these supplements had no anabolic effect. Any effect to be derived from these tercosterone steroids, I mean, tercosterone supplements was strictly a placebo effect. I repeat, tercosterone supplements are garbage. They do nothing. What about marrow root? Well, marrow root, uh, marrow root might have some health benefits. Uh, you know, it's... Um, Let's see, what can I tell you about marrow root? Uh, let me see. It seems to, um, and again, these are animal studies, mostly rats. 
A, a rat study showed that the marrow root decreased anxiety. Uh, it seems to help to regulate blood glucose. Uh, actually, uh, what happens is the larger doses of marrow root increase blood glucose levels, especially when um, rats are on a high-fat diet. Uh, the marrow root does stimulate substances called adipokines, which are proteins released from fat cells. Uh, some of the, uh, uh, there's one of the, a couple of the, uh, most of the adipokines are highly inflammatory. They're not good for your health at all. But there's a, uh, lep leptin is one of the more famous adipokines. Leptin is an appetite regulator. Uh, and, and the uh, fat cells uh, increase uh, leptin uh, when the fat cells start to shrink. Leptin uh, travels to the brain where it stimulates appetite. Some of the newer GLP-1 agonist drugs like, um, uh, what's it called, um, Ozempic, they, one, of the things, one of the reasons they cause weight loss is by regulating leptin. Uh, but there is a beneficial adipokine called adiponectin, and it's adiponectin actually helps decrease insulin resistance. It tends to um, focus the, the metabolism on body fat loss, and it's known to be reduced in obese and diabetic substances. Well, it turns out that in rats, if you give them, uh, if you give them the uh, marrow root, it, it increases adiponectin. Uh, but we don't know whether this also occurs in uh, in uh, in humans. And also, marrow root didn't also increase leptin. Uh, you know, but then again, this was a rodent model. They don't know if this exists in humans. Uh, as I said, the ectosteroids, as far as muscle hypertrophy, uh, they've been, uh, you know, the Russian su studies show that, you know, they increases muscle protein synthesis. Um, uh, it has to do with the activa activation of downstream anabolic signaling uh, substances such as AKT, P13K. Uh, you know, it, it, the activation of that leads to uh, increased muscle syn muscle protein synthesis. Uh, I'm not going to go into the complex uh, ch uh, chemistry here, but uh, and also uh, 20 hydroxy ectosome found in marrow root also uh, affects 16 genes that are implicated in muscle protein synthesis. Uh, so. Uh, you know, what, what, what could we really, also the rat study showed increased power output. Uh, there was a recent two, 2020 study of rats also showed a combination of rhodiola, which is another herb, and, and marrow root, increased muscle protein synthesis and power output, again, in rats. No evidence for humans. Um, let me see. Uh, in the, if you give the uh, marrow root to rats on a high-fat diet, it decreases corticosteroid, which is the rat equivalent of cortisol. It increases it 27% uh, when, uh, when you give a certain dosage of the marrow root. Uh, this is, a, you know, if you give pomegranate root extract, it, it also re results in the same uh, reduction in corticosteroid in rats. Uh, there's no known interaction between marrow root and thyroid hormones. Um, it doesn't. Uh, the uh, ectosteroids do not appear to interact with the estrogen receptors. Uh, again, uh, they don't interact with the androgen receptors, uh, and uh, so uh, you know, animal studies show. As far as safety goes, it's it's fairly safe. But what what could let's draw if we draw a line under marrow root. Uh, what could we deduce from the existing research? First thing to know is that there's almost no human research. The existing human research on marrow root involves strictly Russian, early Russian research, which is highly questionable. It's never been replicated by Western scientists, and the research on, on ectosteroids that has been replicated in human subjects involved in weight training by Western scientists showed no anabolic effects whatsoever, probably because of the short half-life of ectosteroids. Uh, they, they don't last very long in the body. Not, they probably have broken down before enough of it can cause much of a biological effect. Uh, they're basically a complete waste of money. Uh, Turkestone, Turkestone is a total fraud. 
uh, a lot of again well-known people that a lot that have um, a lot of people some of these uh, people that are pushing Turkostrom have millions of viewers on their YouTube channels they have a large following people believe them well that's your problem I'm talking to the people that believe them because you're being suckered into buying uh, you because you trust these people that you're buying expensive crappy supplements like Turkostrom which do absolutely nothing except lighten your wallet that's all they do. So marrow root, again, it's, it's not that it's dangerous, but does it, will it actually help build muscle? Based on the research I've seen, which is, again, almost all rat studies and early Russian research, the answer would be no. It's a waste of money. Don't waste your money. Ectosteroids, uh, do, uh, they don't do anything. So that's about it for marrow root. Again, it's a bust as a supplement. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic aids, including stuff like ectosteroids, but I'm going to talk about some of the uh, ergogenic aids that work, hormone therapy, uh, anti-aging research, effective fat loss techniques, supplement science. Again, which supplements work, which ones don't. Unlike those YouTube fakes who push Turkosterone, I have no involvement with any supplement company. Anything I write about in my Applied Metabolics about supplements will be the 100% truth you could count on it. I have a lot of experience with supplements myself. I could talk about how they've affected me, which I do. Uh, and all of this is in uh, Applied Metabolics. I also include uh, information on women's health and fitness. Uh, each issue is uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 pages. Solid evidence-based information. That also includes my over six decades of personal experience and observation. That, uh, that amount of uh, background knowledge, to my knowledge, is not emulated by anybody on the entire internet who's publishing a digital publication related to nutrition and exercise. I mean, there's a lot of good, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to say that some of these other digital publications are crap. I looked at some of them. In fact, when I was uh, preparing to publish Applied Metabolics in the digital version, the actual print version came out in the late 90s and lasted for two years. Uh, but uh, I, when I started, uh, when I before I uh, decided to publish the digital version of Applied Metabolics, I actually looked at about 10 different digital publications related to nutrition exercise because I wanted to see how they organized their material and how much information they provided. So I can tell you that a lot of these were pretty damn good, if I say so myself, but the difference between those publications and Applied Metabolics was A, none of the people writing for those publications could back, can, can equal the experience and, and, and uh, extent of study that I have. <coughs> and, uh, you know, by the way, having a PhD doesn't make you an expert on all things. So don't, don't be fooled by that either. Some of these other, uh, the other publications, none of them cover as wide a range of topics as applied metabolics. And most important of all, as a professional writer for over 40 years with thousands of pub published material, <coughs> I can say that none of these public other publications uh, that are as easy to read as applied metabolics. Applied metabolics is written in a simple magazine style that's understand, uh, understandable by anyone who's reached the sixth grade in education. Uh, and even if you can't read, there's programs that you could use to read, to have the articles read to you. So you don't even have to read them. There's no excuse not to subscribe to Applied Metabolic, especially since it's considerably less expensive than most of these other, other some of these other digital publications are anywhere from three to 20 times more expensive than Applied Metabolics. And yet, they don't even, even approach the depth of information offered by Applied Metabolics, if I say so myself. I know that sounds a, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, egotistical, but it's the truth. I put a lot of words, into, I mean a lot of work, into uh, Applied Metabolics. So subscribe today. It's at www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, shoot me an email, <coughs> and I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, send you an invitation to uh, join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, 
exercise science and general health. Current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything related to nutrition and exercise that they're curious about. And if it's a short question and requires a short answer, I'll be happy to answer. But again, you have to be a subscriber. Uh, I get an average of maybe 10, 15 emails and questions each day uh, by people who are not subscribers. And, uh, you know, no offense, but I'm not going to take the, the little bit of uh, time I have to answer people that uh, just send me questions out of the blue. Uh, I will answer questions of, uh, from the Applied Metabolic subscribers because they support my work and I, and I answer their questions as a kind of a bonus and appreciation for the fact that they are subscribers. So that's about it. Uh, what else can I say? If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Um, I still don't have a dog. <laughs> You know, my, my dog Bruno passed away March 12th. I miss him every day. Uh, I came close a couple of times to getting another dog, but I will get one for sure. Uh, it's, it's, I got to have one probably uh, in the next few, few weeks, if not days. When I get one, when I get a dog, I'll bring him onto the video so you could see him. So, you know, save a life. Dogs are the best. They're great. And there's, the loyalty of a dog cannot be equal by any other creature on earth. No offense to cats, but that's the way it is. Take care. Thanks for listening.